It's an eight game Monday night in the NBA. DeMar DeRozan and the red hot San Antonio Spurs. Come off a win up against, well, his former team just a few days ago, but this is the league leading Nikola Jokic and the Denver Nuggets. Just a couple of teams in action. While elsewhere in the NBA, the Timberwolves fired team president and head coach Tom Thibodeau Sunday. The move came after a 22-point win over the Lakers. We'll have more discussion. While the Houston Rockets are 11-2 in their last 13 games, they welcome the team sitting atop the Western Conference, the Denver Nuggets. The Nuggets are looking to extend their five-game winning streak with tip-off just after 8 Eastern on NBA League Pass. Hey everybody, welcome into our NBA TV studios. This is Game Time Live. I'm Kristen Ledlow, alongside the czar, Mike Fratello, our Hall of Fame coach, Kevin McHale. I said the league leading Denver Nuggets, or the Western Conference leading Denver Nuggets. Yeah. I'm not used to the Western Conference leading team not leading the league as well. And not saying Golden State Warriors when you say or Western right, Conference yeah. leading. A lot of stuff. You can say. It's a whole new thing it's in 2019, baby. It's a lot going on. Baby. For it to be January and for us to be having these conversations, it's a lot. Uh, but first, let's discuss what James Harden is doing in Houston with 10 straight games, scoring at least 35 points. Now, uh, guys, he could pass Michael Jordan with an 11th straight 35-plus point performance against the Nuggets. It, of course, is not going to come easy against the Western Conference leading team. Kevin, let me go back to the old days for a second. Do you remember when players used to come into training camp to get in shape? Yes. And then eventually 15, 20 games into it, you see them round out to what they are, really. But nowadays that doesn't happen. You come in shape. <laughs> but Harden looked like he was from the old days yes, the way he, he first came in. Yeah, he's a little heavier to start the season off. But he's on a roll right now. I tell you what, as a player sometimes, you just get on. You, you step out there and the basket seems like it's three times as big as it normally looks. Everything seems slow. It's, you, 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 like you look around and you wonder why, why is everybody playing so slow and why yeah. isn't everybody trying harder? And you get into a groove where the game is so smooth and everything's so easy. He's in one of those, um, right now he's in one of those just kind of runs where everything is just perfect for him. He's making such a, and he shoots that step back three. Like I swear that's such a hard shot. I, all you people go home and don't shoot a 24 uh uh, foot step back three. Shoot a 15 foot step yeah. back. Yeah. It's hard to jump back and shoot 15, 18 footers. He's kind of mastered that shot and just playing great. Well, let's first listen to what Rockets coach Mike D'Antoni had to say prior to this game. Because he's so skilled. He's big. He's got a big body um, uh, and just skilled. Shoots threes, passes the ball really well. He's got all kinds of moves. I mean, just keep going on. He's just a great player. Pick and roll. Huh? They've been running a lot of inverted pick and roll with, with Murray screening. Huh? What, what's unique about that? that makes well, it's inverted. That's what's yeah. unique about it. Because uh, you usually don't have a seven footer that can handle the ball and pass like he can. And it puts pressure on uh, when uh, Murray pops. He's such a good three point shooter that if you stop it with the little guy, which you have to, then you got to get back to Murray who's making shots all over the place. So it's a challenge to be able to do it. You got to get up, you know, you got to do it quick and hope for the best. We always talk about the parity in the Western Conference. Denver's at the top. Does it surprise you at all, and, and how have they been able to do it? Well, I think anytime Golden State's not at the top, it kind of surprises you. So, yeah, to a certain extent, now you knew they were good. They've been good the last couple of years, and just by being in the West, they hadn't made the playoffs. But uh, uh, they keep getting better, keep getting more mature as players. They had a lot of young players, and they're getting a lot better, and Murray's playing out of his mind, and Jokic, and uh, uh, so you – you kind of see they're getting better, being completely on top. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a surprise, but it's not a, it's definitely, you can understand why, because they're that good. But the Rockets have won nine consecutive home games during James Harden's streak. They've won 11 of their last 13 overall. Coach, you just challenged the viewers to go home and try to shoot a step back, even 15 footer. So is that what has impressed you most about the numbers that he's put up? Or is it perhaps the wins that he's led his team to? Well, it's really, it's winning, because it's that's what this league's all about. Mike, you've been in the league for a long time. It's about, you know, it's one thing, if you have talent, you can go put up numbers, and you coach guys that can put up big numbers. I always thought that the the really tough thing in the NBA is put up win after win after win. They've won nine in a row at home, and it, it's due partially just because of his individual play, but, you know, guys are making down shots for him, too. James is a good distributor, and they're knocking down shots. Mike, and you know how important that is. Guys have got to make shots. I'm talking about the step back, Kristen. It's tough to get a shot off in the NBA. Yeah. For somebody who's never played, you don't understand what it's like, how much energy you need and you use up just to get an open look or get this shot off. You've got a guy who controls the ball as much as Harden, 
and then he takes basically whatever shot he wants to get off. And these aren't defenders who aren't trying. He's a right. great athlete, yeah. and you try to put your best guy on him, and he makes him look silly. So it, it's incredible what he's done now, and he's playing at that level. Like Kevin said, sometimes you just feel like you can't be stopped. And also, when he puts his head down and goes to the hole, I love when he starts games like that. When I coach him, I'd always say, James, just get to the line. Just put your head down. It gets fouls on their best defender because immediately the best defender comes out there, and you want to set the tone right away as a defender. You get up into him. Boy, you pick up a couple fouls in that first quarter. You play defense completely different the whole game. James sometimes will settle for threes, but when he's putting his head down and attacking and shooting the three, he, you know, he's unguardable. It really is. Do you see this current usage rate as perhaps a problem as the team tries to make a playoff push in the Western Conference as he has had to do what he's had to do without Chris Paul in the lineup? You know, I think usage rate is also relative. I just think he has the ball a lot. But everybody used to play 36, 37, 38 minutes. I, I mean, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying everybody did it. Hell, I over averaged over 40 a couple years minutes, you know. And I, How do you feel know, now, by the way? <laughs> beat up, but I'm old. Uh, but uh, no, I... Uh, um, you know, I, I, I think he has the ball a lot. I think he's. I think James is better coming off screens and doing stuff, just mixing it in. But he doesn't play that one anymore. He, he has the ball. I think when Chris Paul has the ball, it, give, it gives. It'll give James when he, Chris Paul comes back. It'll give James a chance to rest a little bit while he's on the court. Chris, I got a story for you. Many years ago, as a very young coach, we played the Boston Celtics second exhibition game of the year. Bill Fitch was the head coach of Boston. When the game ended, I looked at the stat sheet and I saw Larry Bird. 42 minutes. So on the way out, I ran into Coach Fitch, and I said, Coach, as a young coach, just trying to learn, are you concerned you played Larry 42 minutes? And he looked at me and went, no, he's going to play 44, 45 every night during the season. <laughs> yeah. He's got to get in shape for it. Yeah, that's exactly. What told me, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, on Saturday, Nikola Jokic scored a season-high 39 points in 34 minutes, along with 12 rebounds, 6 assists. He could perhaps be the best player that we have not been including in our MVP conversation regularly. But first, let's listen to what Nuggets head coach Mike Malone had to say on Nikola and on this matchup moving forward. Can you first comment on Nikola Jokic getting Western Conference Player of the Week? Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's great for him. Uh, one thing it says is that obviously we, we had a good week as a team going 3-0. Uh, but when you look at his uh, productivity, his efficiency, uh, and, and what stands out to me is the playmaking. Uh, you know, the, the scoring, the rebounding, we've seen that. But to be, I think, nine assists per game uh, is pretty remarkable and historical in its own right. So uh, happy for him. Uh, but more importantly, we have a, a huge game tonight, start of a five-game and seven-night challenge. Uh, last time you played the Rockets, you actually did a pretty good job of holding down James Harden, but they won anyway. So uh, how do you go about it tonight? Same kind of thoughts or, or change it up a little bit? You know, in the first half, uh, we were up one. He had three points in the first half. Um, you know, but other guys were getting off from the three-point line. And then we change up matchups and uh, uh, game plan at halftime, and he had 19 points in the second half, and other guys were limited. So it's really pick your poison. He's playing at a whole nother level right now. Um, um, MVP, all that, it's, it's really kind of historical what he's doing. Um, but when he is in a rhythm like that, different looks, different matchups, different people guarding him, and uh, just uh, try, try to change it up a little bit, keep him off balance a little bit. But it's going to be a hell of a challenge because right now, uh, last whatever how many games 40 points a night taking 17 threes um, and when you think you play good defense he just shoots right over you anyways uh, Jamal Gary and Nicola Paul had really good numbers they only played together a little bit in the last couple of games uh, are you tempted to start Gary and Millsap tonight yeah it's obviously uh, those guys especially after that Charlotte game both those guys are really good in that game off the bench um, so when I say after the game, our bench played well tonight, that's with two starters, obviously. Um, but no, there's no doubt, you know, those guys, um, whether it's tonight or the next couple of games, they'll, they'll definitely be back in the lineup where they belong. You know, uh, me bringing them off the bench is just slowly working them back in, getting game rhythm, getting uh, their confidence back after being out for, uh, for a lengthy period. But uh, you can see, as I can see, Chris, that they have a rhythm, they have a confidence, and uh, they're more than ready to be back in the starting lineup. So while the statistical performances by Nikola Jokic tend to stand out, the Nuggets have put forth a balanced offensive effort this season. They lead the league in assist percentage at 65.5%. What is it, Coach, that's working so well when it comes to the Nuggets' ball movement? Well, Michael Malone has gotten his matches across about sharing the basketball, and he has a couple unselfish players like Jokic, who isn't ranked in points per game, isn't ranked 
middle of the pack way down there for rebounds, but seventh in the league in assists right now. So this is a team that has bought into the concept of sharing the basketball. He sold them on depth. One of the best players hasn't even played basically for the entire season, but they've taken care of business at home. 16 and three in their building, 10 and eight on the road. Do you think perhaps that he is in the MVP race, despite not being in the regular conversation that we have that tends to center around LeBron James and Giannis Antetokounmpo and now even James Harden? As he keeps on putting up these numbers, of course he's going to be. And as they keep on winning, uh, Jokic is going to get all of his love from their, their record. If they can continue to win and win at a high level, people are going to say, okay, what's driving this? And as you said, Mike, they have a great ability to move the ball. Part of the reason they can move the ball so well is they play five out a lot, which is the new trend in the NBA. But Jokic is such a good passer. Some of the teams play five out, play a five out, and they don't, the guys can't move the ball. They, they get, to get stuck in big guys' hands. He, he just keeps moving the ball. He throws passes. Like, let's see him throw passes all over the floor, from the backcourt to the front court, high post, low post, passing. But I like their five-out action. There's a lot of room and, uh, for a, a lot of guys to be, make plays, and Jokic is one of them. And as you watch this team, from top to bottom, what is it that they lack when it comes to contending for a championship? We may have to go back to last year to answer that question. The fact that they went down to game 82, lost and did not get into the playoffs. And the entire summer, Michael Malone did nothing but try and bring this team together with whatever he was doing, where they met up at places, worked out together. From day one, coming back to training camp, the message was delivered. We missed out by one game of making the playoffs this year. We're on a mission this year. And he put that carrot out in front of him. They're after it right now, and that's why they're playing as well as they are. I'd say for them, it's the ability to get stops on demand and scores on demand. I mean, because, you know, like Red Arbeck used to always say, if you're down three with a minute to go, you're going to have to score. I promise you, if you want to yeah. win the game. He said, I'm not a great math guy, but I know we're down three. <laughs> and you're going to have to go out and score. So I, I think all great teams have the ability to get stops on demand and scores on demand. Like you, 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 With them, is it going to be Millsip? Is it going to be Jokic? What player are you going to run? How are you going to get the ball? They have such an equal opportunity in the offense. But sometimes late in the game, you've got to give your best player against that best matchup the ball in his best spot and let him go to work and get a shot for you. And then stops on demand where everybody's on there. And you, like, you know, you're going to go out and there, when you play on chapter caliber teams, you go like, Hey, we need to stop. And you just feel it in your heart. You're going to go get that stop. And you go out there. And I think that's what you need. That's the next level for these guys. Young team making that jump is that down two with a minute to go. And you win that game. You win it by three or four because you get stops, you score. And that's all that builds confidence. So that's to me, that's the next level for these guys is stops and scores on demand. How are they going to do it? Do it as a group defensively, but offensively, who are they going to go to and where on the floor is that guy going to get it for them? Well, there's more news surrounding the Rockets organization as the team traded guard Michael Carter Williams in cash to Chicago for a protected second round pick in what's a salary cap maneuver by Houston. The Bulls will waive MCW, whose contract would have become guaranteed for the season Monday afternoon. Coming up next on Game Time Live, we're going to take a look at what's next for the Timberwolves and break down their players only game against the Thunder.